This is a video walkthrough for practice 3B, solving linear systems algebraically. And question number one asks us what's the difference between finding the solution to a system graphically and finding the solution to a system algebraically. So to solve graphically, we want to graph both equations and find intersection points. And I'll put uh, points, the S in parentheses there, because if it's a linear system, when we have a solution, we could have one intersection point. We could have uh, a couple if it's a nonlinear system. Um, and of course, if we have an infinite number of solutions, then the two graphs are going to be on top of one another and intersect in an infinite number of points. Now, to solve algebraically, we can either do one of two things. We can solve for a variable and substitute into the other equation. Or we can add multiples of the equations together in order to eliminate one variable. Just two different methods that you can do to accomplish the same thing. But graphically, we graph, and to solve a system algebraically, we use either the substitution method or the linear combination method. For two and three, we're asked to solve using the substitution method, and it's important that you use the correct method when prescribed to do so. So I'm going to use the substitution method, and I'm going to put my equations in two columns. The first equation is easiest to solve for y, so I'll solve for y. y equals 1 minus 3x, and then substitute that into the second equation. So 6x plus 3 times the y value equals 1, and now we can replace the y with 1 minus 3x, and now distribute the multiplication over the subtraction in the parentheses. And now we can simplify a little bit. Uh, 6x minus 9x is negative 3x plus 3 is equal to 1. And subtracting 3, we get negative 2. Um, and then dividing by negative 3, we get x is equal to positive 2 thirds because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Now let's take that information and let's move it back over to column 1. y is equal to 1 minus 3 times the value of x that we just got, which is 2 thirds. So y is equal to 1 minus 2, which means y is negative 1. So our ordered pair solution is 2 thirds comma negative 1, always the x coordinate first and the y coordinate second. And remember to put parentheses around your ordered pair. Now let's solve exercise number 3 using the substitution method. So I'll make two columns. y is equal to 1 third x plus 3, and y is equal to negative x minus 5. Both equations are already solved for y, so I'll just simply take that first one and replace the y in the second equation with 1 third x plus 3. This is a fractional equation, so I'm going to go ahead and clear fractions first. Let's multiply everybody by 3. 
So 1 third x times 3 is x. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative x times 3 is negative 3x. And negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Adding 3x to both sides, we get 4x plus 9 is equal to negative 15. And now subtracting 9 from both sides, that will give us 4x is equal to negative 24. And then dividing by 4x is negative 6. Now we're going to take that information we just found out and go back to column 1 to this first equation. And y is equal to 1 third times the x value that we just got, plus 3. And that x value is negative 6. So the y value is negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. So our ordered pair solution is negative 6 comma 1. Remember to put the x and the y, x first comma y second, and parentheses to indicate an ordered pair. In 4 and 5, we're going to continue to use the substitution method. So first equation is x equals 2 minus 3y. Second is 2x plus 6y is equal to 4. The first equation is already solved for x. So we can take the, that and replace the x in the second equation with what x equals in the first equation. So 2 times the x value plus 6 times the y value is equal to 4. And x is going to be replaced with 2 minus 3 times y. Distributing the multiplication and combining like terms together, we get 4 is equal to 4. That's always true. There are an infinite number of solutions. But remember that we are giving our solutions in an ordered pair form. And there's a general solution that you can give, x comma. And then in order to find the y value, I need to take the equation here and solve this equation for y. So subtracting 2, x minus 2 is equal to negative 3y. And then dividing by negative 3, we get that y is equal to negative 1 third times x plus 2 thirds when we distribute that division. So there's our final general solution. That is to say, if we pick an x value, it'll help us get the y value. The last one by the substitution method, x minus 4y is equal to 10 is one equation, and the other is 2x plus 4y is equal to negative 1. Of the variables to solve for, the first equation is easiest to solve for x. So solve for x, x is equal to 4y plus 10, and then substitute into the second equation. So 2 times the x value plus 4y is equal to negative 1, and x gets replaced with 4 times y plus 10. So 2 times 4y is 8y, 2 times 10 is 20, and now we have 12y plus 20 is equal to negative 1, and 12 times y is equal to, uh, subtracting off 21, we get uh, negative 22. And uh, I'm going to back up a minute here. I made a, a little boo-boo. When I brought that, I down that 20, I was thinking ahead. Uh, should be 12y plus 20 is equal to negative 1. And when we subtract, we're going to get negative 21. Now dividing through by 12, y reduces to negative 21 over 12 can reduce by a factor of 3, negative 7 fourths. Now we're going to take that value and replace x with that value in the first equation. So go back to column 1 here. And so x is equal to negative 7 plus 10 is 3. And so our ordered pair solution is 3 comma negative 7 quarters. Don't forget to put parentheses around your ordered pair. For 6 through 9, we're going to be using the elimination method. 
So elimination method is where we're going to add the two equations together eventually and in doing so uh, eliminate one of the variables. We may have to multiply the equations by something first. So in um, the equations in 6, I'm going to multiply the second equation by negative 1, and that gives us negative x plus 7y is equal to negative 13, and then I'll just bring the other equation over x plus 5y is equal to 1. So why did I multiply through by negative 1? In order to give the x terms opposite coefficients. Now when I add together, the x's add up to 0. We get 12y is equal to negative 12. And dividing by 12, y is equal to negative 1. And so now what we can do is take that first equation, x plus 5 times y is equal to 1, and replace the uh, y with negative 1. It gives us x minus 5 is equal to 1, and x is equal to 6. So in ordered pair form, 6 comma negative 1 is the solution. For number 7, we can pick which variable we want to eliminate. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. I like to have, if they already have opposite signs, so I'm going to multiply the second equation by 2, giving us 4x minus 2y is equal to 4. And I did that because the first equation has plus 2y as the y term. When I add these two equations together, we get 5x is equal to 15. And dividing by 5, x is equal to 3. So uh, 3 plus 2 times y is equal to 11 when I use the first equation to substitute in the value of x. Subtracting 3. 2 times y is equal to 8, and dividing by 2, y is equal to 4. So our ordered pair solution is 3 comma 4. Make sure you are using parentheses. For number 8, this time we may have to multiply both equations by something. So if I want to eliminate the y's, and I like the y's because they already have opposite signs, then I need to think about the least common multiple of 3 and 2, which is 6. So I'll multiply the first equation by 2 and the second by 3. So multiplying the first equation and then multiplying the second equation our y co terms now have opposite coefficients. So adding together 23 times x is equal to 46, and 46 is twice 23, so x is equal to 2. And now we can take and substitute into either of the original equations. So I'll just pick the first one. 7 times the x value plus 3 times the y value is equal to 5. We replace the x value with 3, so that gives us 14 plus 3 times y is equal to 5. Subtracting off 14. 3 times y is equal to negative 9, and y is equal to negative 3. So x comma y in ordered pair form. Don't forget to put parentheses around it. Now let's take a look at number 9. In number 9, we may have to multiply both equations by something. Um, if we want to, for instance, eliminate the x's this time, then I would multiply equation number 1 by 5, which will give us a 10x and equation number 2 by negative 2, which will give us a negative 10x. Multiplying through in the first equation, we get 10x plus 15y is equal to negative 50. And in the second equation, negative 10x plus 4y is equal to negative 26. Adding the two equations together, 19 times y is equal to negative 76. And 19 is almost 20. And negative 76 is almost negative 80. And they, uh, so 20 goes into 80 four times. 19 goes into 76 four times as well, because you'll notice that 76 is four, uh, four less than 80. So when we divide, we get negative 4.
If you're not really sure, just try something. Try multiplying 19 times 4 and see what happens. 19 times 3. Just use trial and error until you find the right division. All right, so from here, we're going to find the x value. So I'll pick that first equation. 2 times x plus 3 times the y value, which is negative 4, is equal to negative 10. That gives us 2x minus 12 is equal to negative 10. Adding 12 to both sides, that gives us a 2 times x is equal to 2, and x is equal to 1. So the ordered pair solution is 1 comma negative 4. In 10 through 17, we can solve using either substitution or elimination. And a hint, we're going to uh, eliminate our fractional coefficients by multiplying by the LCD to clear fractions. So let's do that in number 10. Let's multiply this by 3 just to eliminate the fractions. So then we get x plus 3y is equal to 4. And then in the second equation, we get negative x plus 2y is equal to 11. Oh, look at this. When I add these two equations together, the x's are going to go away. So 5 times y is equal to 15, and y is equal to 3. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to place that in this equation right here. Negative x plus 2 times 3 is equal to 11. Negative x plus 6 is equal to 11. Subtracting 6, we get negative x is equal to 5, which means that x is negative 5. So our ordered pair solution is negative 5 comma 3. For number 11, the substitution method is not going to be such so good here. Because if we solve either equation for x or for y, there will be fractional uh, coefficients involved, which are not impossible. But we probably want to solve this one with substitution. Let's eliminate the y variables, since we have opposite sign uh, coefficients there. Multiply the first by 2 and the second by 3, and that will give us each of the y terms will be 6y and negative 6y. Multiplying the first equation through, 4x plus 6y is equal to negative 20, and the second equation, 15x minus 6y is equal to 39. Adding together, 19 times x is equal to 19, so x is equal to 1, and 2 times the x value plus 3 times the y value is equal to negative 10. I just arbitrarily picked the first equation. It doesn't really matter which one you use. And now let's subtract off the 2 and divide by 3, and y is negative 4, so our ordered pair solution is 1 comma negative 4. Don't forget to put those parentheses around your ordered pair. For number 12, I see a first equation that's already solved for a variable. So I could use my two column approach for substitution. So x is equal to 7 minus 4 times y, and my second column, 2 times x plus 8 times y is equal to 6. So I'm going to take and replace the x with 7 minus 4y in the first equation, from the first equation. And then distribute the multiplication. 14 minus 8 times y plus 8 times y is equal to 6. And when we simplify the left side of the equation, we get 14. On the right, we get 6. That's never true. That must mean that there is no solution to this system. For number 13, we're going to eliminate fractions first of all before we think about what else to do. So I'm going to multiply the first equation by 10. That will give us 2 times x minus y is equal to 5. And our second equation could easily be multiplied by, or rather our first equation could be multiplied by negative 1, which will give us a positive y. So that when we add those together, we're going to get opposite coefficients, and that means that when we add them together, we're going to lose the y variable. So multiplying through by negative 1, negative x plus y is equal to positive 6. Now let's add them together. Negative x plus 2x is x. The y's add up to 0, and that's equal to 11. And 
from here, I'm going to take that first equation, x minus y is equal to negative 6, and subtract off the 11, and that will give us uh, negative 17, and y is equal to positive 17. So our ordered pair solution is 11 comma 17. Don't forget to put parentheses around your ordered pair. Let's move on to 14. From the looks of it, 14 is one I think we want to tackle with the elimination or the addition method because it's not going to be easy to solve either of those equations for x or for y. If we want to eliminate the y variable, we can easily multiply the first equation by negative 2, which will give us a negative 4y, and then we can eliminate the y's. So that gives us negative 6 times x minus 4 times y is equal to negative 16. I'll bring down the second equation, 5x plus 4y is equal to 13, and add together negative 6x plus 5x is negative x, and the 4y and the negative 4y add up to 0. On the right side of the equals, those two numbers add up to negative 3. Dividing by negative 1, x is positive 3. And 3 times the x value plus 2 times the y value is equal to 8. So 9 plus 2 times the y value is equal to 8. Subtracting 9, 2y is equal to negative 1, and y is negative a half. So in ordered pair form, that's 3 comma negative a half. I'm looking at my negative there and I'm thinking the teacher might not know whether I really meant a negative or that whether that's a smudge. So please try to be as deliberate as you can about what your negatives look like. Negative 1 half. For number 15, I see fractional coefficients and I'm automatically just going to clear them first then worry about the elimination next. So multiply through by the LCD of 12 in the first equation, and that will give us 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 is 8x. And for the second term, 12 divided by 4 is 3 times 3 is 9y equals 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. And then for the second equation, we're going to multiply through by the least common denominator of 24, and that will give us negative 4x plus 9y is equal to 24. And what you'll notice is that our y terms already have opposite coefficients, so we can just add the two equations together. 4 times x is equal to 12, and dividing by 4, x is 3. And you might just want to pick one of the uh, equations without fractions in it, for instance. So I might pick this one right here and then replace the x with 3. So negative 4 times 3 plus 9y is equal to 24. That gives us negative 12 plus 9y is 24. And adding 12, 9y is 36. And dividing by 9, y is 4. So 3 comma 4 is the ordered pair solution. Don't forget to put parentheses around that in x comma y form. All right, a couple more of these type. I see fractions again, so I'm going to clear the fractions. Multiply equation number 2 by 4, and that's going to give us 2 times a plus b is equal to 4. And what I'll notice is in the first equation now, I have a positive 2a term in that as well. So I'm going to multiply this first equation by negative 1. And that would give us a negative 2a minus 5b is equal to negative 16. And now when we add the two equations together, our a terms are going to go away. Negative 5b plus b is negative 4 times b. Negative 16 plus 4 is negative 12. And dividing by negative 4, b is positive 3. And I'll just replace 
the b in the first equation with 3. So 2a plus 5 times b is equal to 16. And that gives us 2 times a plus 15 is equal to 16. Subtracting 15, 2a is equal to 1, and a is equal to a half. So in a comma b form, 1 half comma 3. Your ordered pairs will have alphabetical um, coordinates in them. So a comma b, x comma y, always in alphabetical order. For number 17, this has the look of an equation that we want to solve with elimination because all the terms have different numbered coefficients, which means it's not going to be fair easy to solve each equation for x or for y. So if I want to eliminate my x's, the least common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12. So multiply equation number 1 by 4 and equation number 2 by negative 3. That gives us 12 times x minus 20 times y is equal to 44. And negative 12 times x plus 9y is equal to negative 33. Adding the two equations together, negative 11 times y is equal to 11. And dividing by negative 11, y is negative 1. So... 3 times x minus 5 times negative 1 is equal to 11, or 3x plus 5 is equal to 11. Subtracting 5 and then dividing by 3, we get x is equal to 2. So my ordered pair solution is 2 comma negative 1. Now let's move on to some different questions. For what value of k does each system below have an infinite number of solutions? Remember, we can always go back to that graphical approach, right? If, the, if they have an infinite number of solutions, then the two equations, graphs, will be on top of each other. In other words, intersecting in an infinite number of points. So the second equation is already in y equals mx plus b form, where the slope m is uh, is, is the k value that we're actually looking for. So I'm going to look at the second equation here, and I'm sorry, rather the first equation, and solve it for y. We want to put it in y equals mx plus b form. So negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 10, dividing through by negative 2, we get y is equal to 3 halves times x minus 5, which is the same equation. It's just that k has to be 3 halves in order to, for us to have the exact same equation. For number 19, we can take a very similar approach. The first equation, when put in y equals mx plus b form, is y is equal to negative 5x plus 10. And the second equation, when we put it in y equals mx plus b form, or when we move toward it, would be 2y is equal to negative 10x plus k. Let's divide through by 2 so that we have y equals form. We get y is equal to negative 5x plus k divided by 2. Well, you'll notice that for an infinite number of solutions, these two equations have to be the same line, right? And in order to be a, the same line, then k divided by 2 has to equal 10. Multiply both sides by 2, and we get k is equal to 20. In number 20, this system is told, we're told that it has an infinite number of solutions. So that means that these are the same line, graphing right on top of each other. They are the line y is equal to 3x minus 4. So we could give a general solution, x comma 3x minus 4. And it actually, actually asks us to give three specific solutions. So we can pick any number here. Uh, if I pick x to be 0, then my y value has to be 3 times 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. If I pick x to be 1, 
then my y value has to be 3 times 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. If I pick my x to be 2, then 3 times 2 is 6 minus 4 is 2. And so these are three possible solutions. You can come up with any number of them.